Hello, everyone. Welcome to Agile World Wellness. And today, again, we will talk about psychological safety, a very important topic. And today we will talk about actually talking. We have language as people, and it really is very helpful to communicate. But sometimes the things we say or the things we don't say impact the psychological safety in a bad way. So we will be talking about verbalizing things, about words, about sentences about things we pronounce or we write or we don't so this is very important we can do fantastic things our activities and actions can prove one thing and just between the lines based on our activities people can judge something and understand something but sometimes when we do not connect our activities with the things we say, it just doesn't work. So sometimes we need to pay more attention of what we really pronounce and say to people we're interacting with. So first things first, let's uh, think of situations when we say things with a very good intent, but they have the opposite effect. For example, you meet a person and the person is uh, really uh, stressed out and he's very afraid of something and you want to support this person. You want to make him feel safe psychologically. And what you say is, oh, please, John, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid about the meeting. You know, everything will be fine. Our brain and our amygdala is very, very skeptic and very negative. And out of everything what you told, amygdala will just grab a phrase, don't be afraid. When we send don't messages, the brain neglects the don't part. The brain does not really perceive, doesn't hear the not uh, words. And by saying don't be afraid, we create a call to action to the brain saying, please be afraid. Please be afraid as much as possible. This is the common, the call to action thing I'm sending you. So when we say people don't do it, the brain interpret it as a call to action to actually do and do it as soon as possible. So the first thing we should stop doing is we should sending don't messages. Don't be afraid, John. Don't think about it. You know, everything will be fine. Don't be stressed out. Don't be anxious. Don't be nervous. Uh, don't be unhappy. This all means that the person is like programmed to be unhappy, stressed, anxious, and so on. So we need to stop sending don't messages and we need to convert them to do messages. Instead of saying, don't be afraid, we can say, be strong, believe in yourself, keep going, um, be resilient, you know, something to that direction, something which has a positive uh, meaning, something which um, makes a person understand what he actually needs to do instead of sending don't messages, which are not very clear. Okay, if I don't do this, what should I do instead? This is very important. Uh, second thing, uh, from a neurolinguistic point of view, uh, when our brains hear the words with negative, um, negative meaning, brains tend to remember them and react to them much stronger and better than they do um, when they are having the stimuli with a positive word. So uh, to make it simple, if I say fear, pain, blood, uh, loneliness, um, and things like that, the brain really starts to, to put an alarm and the memory switches on and you really become very conscious and there are many brain parts involved, but these are very strong words because the amygdala likes them because they're negative words. When I say things like happiness, um, friends, uh, joy, sun, uh, children, puppies, you know, something, love, yeah, something positive of course these words are very strong as well but unfortunately for your brain there if they are compared with the negative words uh, the, with the minus words if we call them uh, they are not as strong so if you um, are doing a doing a talk 
and you have many words involved, most probably the brain will concentrate on the bad words. Yeah. And do you need that? No, because again, this bad word, they program the brain and it doesn't create the psychological safety. So you need to do a reframing. You need to rephrase and try to add as many positive or neutral words to your speech and to things you write. So instead of saying, uh, we have many problems, you can say, we need to meet each other and uh, brainstorm solutions. Or instead of saying that, um, you know, we need to, to stop um, being toxic and having conflicts, you can say, let's discuss on how can we be friendly and have engaged and motivated team and feel safe. You know, you understand the difference. You, you're the, what you say is 100% safe but the words you use and how you package your message is different. Also, when teams are uh, under stress and they, they don't feel safe, you can see that people start to use more bad negative words more than they used to. Also, it can be that um, people start using more t- taboo language and, you know, more often use the rude words. And this is very natural way how to react. But what you can do consciously, you can clean out your language from all the uh, uh, words which um, uh, do not impact psychological safety positively and start to use more words. So if you have a team and people are really uh, not feeling safe and then you, you say bad words, you just make the situation worse. This is one thing, yeah, be accurate to with wording, yeah, be a good copywriter, be a great author, yeah, mm, add more positivity, uh, which will impact the brain. Another thing is that they are magic words and magic sentences, which can create the psychological safety just by you pronouncing them, saying them one on one to a person or, or in a team meeting publicly. And um, they are very much based on the fundamental psychological needs we all have. We all want to be loved, accepted, appreciated, respected, included. And sometimes your activity is what you do with the person or with the team. They kind of send a signal that, yes, everything is in place. You know, people are respected, they're accepted, loved, connected, but you'd never say it. Yeah, and people in amygdala, they tend to do projections. They tend to guess. They tend to actually believe in the worst scenarios. So sometimes you need to clear out the territory and you need to just say the things the way they are. And let's say one of your employees is disengaged and he became like a hedgehog, uh, you know, very, very reactive, very sensitive, um, very, uh, very often reacting in a negative way, whatever you say. Yeah, you need to pronounce things he wants to hear. What is it? What is the need? Most probably such words as, um, I really appreciate you being in the team. I really value expertise. Gratitude works very nicely. Thank you so much for your contribution to to the project and for being so accurate and going into detail. Or I really trust your opinion or I really honor uh, your uh, your expertise and uh, I trust you. Uh, Magic words like please uh, do whatever uh, you 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 feel is correct, whatever you think is correct, I fully trust you. Or please um, always know that I'm on your side. Please always know that I am there for you. Please know that I'm always ready to help. Is there anything that I can help you and assist you with? And instead of um, instead of um, sending like comments like you know making people do something you can say what would be the way you uh, would solve the problem what do you think needs to be done what is your opinion yeah, or I value your opinion. I want to hear your thoughts. I am very open and I'm ready to um, to different points of views. You know, sometimes we think that these things are per se. You know, a person is working for me and it means I already think he's smart. It already means automatically that uh, I respect his expertise. 
But, you know, amygdala is there. Amygdala is scanning the environment for any threats, any risks, any bad things. And that is why you need to quiet the amygdala by saying these good things, by verbalizing, by writing them. So either you um, share your appreciation saying, I think that you are managing the project in an intelligent way. I think that you are a very strong leader. I think that you are a great team player. Thank you so much for always sharing your positive vibes with us. Thanking, appreciating, saying good words, and saying things that actually people want to hear. Because, you know, from childhood, sometimes we have kind of a deficit in things. Many things our parents didn't tell us, and we really wanted to hear it. So now if you're supervising the team or you're a team player, you can somehow substitute that, you know, and, and you can give to people what they want uh, to hear. Somebody is hungry for a little bit more respect and status, and you you, you can't say that you think that, you know, now this uh, person has a personal power, that he's great, you know, that you believe in his strengths or whatever, that you trust his opinion, that you want to hear his recommendations and consultations, his point of view. So, so uh, raising his status and making feel, you know, appreciated, respected and so on. Somebody is liking something else. Somebody maybe feels lonely on remote uh, job and what you can do, you can say that I want uh, really to connect with you more. Let's have a small coffee talk. Um, it's really important for me when we're chatting with you. So just say things people want uh, to, to hear because sometimes we're very greedy, by the way. We know that people want to hear it and we're not saying it just because they want it. So why should we? We're kind of pushed. Yeah, be very uh, generous. You know, being generous, sharing good things is, a, is easy. It doesn't really cost it. And from a perspective point of view, when you are sharing thank you messages and the messages of appreciation, and encouragement, you actually also get all the great neuromediators. You say good things to others, but actually being egoistic, being selfish, you also support yourself. What else can we say when we talk about verbalizing? Um, we know that people tend to remember things which we say in the very beginning and in the very end of the of the message. So if you write a letter, a Slack message, or you know you do a speech, and uh, you need need to understand what do you put in intro and in outro. So try to use positive words and positive messages and strong messages because what is in the middle, of course, it will be. Um, uh, remembered as well but the, but the the power of the beginning and the end it also works when we're watching the films for example or reading the books so please be accurate how you start and there are really uh, do's and don'ts and one of the don'ts is that if you're willing to share the news with your team you definitely shouldn't start it with saying, I have some news to share. Because amygdala again will think, oh, news, most probably we are bankrupting. Most probably I will be fired. Oh, maybe we have a huge change in top management and it can be very severe change. People will always think that the changes are bad. They will, you know, create the most pessimistic scenarios in their mind. So instead of saying this, you can say that we have received... Um, um, a positive feedback about our project. Yeah, let's discuss uh, how we can continue and let's create a roadmap. Or um, very often uh, we are saying, uh, writing messages saying, hey, I need to talk to you. And even if you want to talk about something positive, the person will be frightened. He will think like, ooh, ooh I have failed. I made something wrong. They need to talk to me. So you need to clarify what is it that you are really willing to talk about, uh, saying like, okay, um, I have a difficulty understanding the file and I need some help. Can you talk to me? Can we have a quick chat? And then the person will at once understand there's no danger. You will not something talk something super serious or negative with him. And he will be open and that will create psychological safety. Uh, also, when we are interacting with each other and we talk about the deadline, sometimes we're, uh, we don't take time to write something in a proper way. We're just saying, hey, when it will be done? Hey, the deadline is approaching. When will you do it? 
the brain will be under stress because most probably the person understands that, yes, um, something is wrong with timing. I need to speed up. So instead of doing this, you can say, hey, how does it look like? Uh, would it be possible to make it by the end of the week? Do you need some help? So instead of just checking, you provide some assistance, some collaboration, some cooperation, or you can also say that, you know, this pro uh, if we do this project in time, we will be able to get some extra budget, for example. So does it, does it look like that we can do it or not? Okay, if not, let's think of a plan B. So uh, to sum it up, please analyze your speech, make an audit, read the messages you have been writing in the past month. Also, when you talk to people, you know, be reflexive and try to uh, read between the lines and analyze the words you're using. Do your best to use positive words instead of negative. Please stop using the don't messages and convert them to positive do messages. Please uh, take care of the things you say because words, they can be magic, but they also can be very, very, very difficult uh, to perceive and they can really impact your psychological safety, not in the way you would love it to be. Words are important, as important as other elements of psychological safety, and we will talk about them next time. See you soon, and I wish you to have a lot of good words. Bye-bye and have a good day.